Hey everybody, I'm David. And I'm Eddie. And we are Full Time Gays. And we're coming to you this week from Stag Run Club. In Mockport, Indiana. Join us as we give you a review and a tour of this hidden treasure. Hey everybody, welcome from Stag Run Club in Mockport, Indiana, which is just north of the Kentucky-Indiana border on the Ohio River by about a few miles. Yep. And it's near Louisville, Kentucky, very near Louisville, less than an hour away. Yep. It's like two hours south of Indianapolis. And this is a campground that we had been a little bit leery about visiting for a couple of years because we had heard that it's not really meant for big rigs like ours. And that might be true. But this is a campground that as we've been here this weekend, we think that actually broke our ratings system. Yeah, so I mean, the, the way the campground was designed was never designed for full timers like us and a big rig. So in order for us to actually score it, we're gonna have to give low scores, but we don't want to because we actually love the place. Yeah, this place is a true gem in so many ways but it doesn't necessarily conform to the things that we typically rate, which are big rig friendliness. How easy is it to get to a campground? And then also how easy is it to navigate once you're inside? We also look at the grounds and facilities. What's here to do while you're staying? Yeah, well, yeah. What, what kind of facilities do they have? Infrastructure in place, what's to do? Yep. We look at the vibe, which is our subjective take on the campground culture. Uh, how easy is it to integrate with the crowd, yep. to meet new people, to have a good time? Exactly. And then finally we look at the internet because he still makes me work all the time. I gotta work too. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's a strong aspect of what we do, so we need to find out if we can still work while we're here. Yeah, exactly. And so, as we said, this isn't a place that typically checks those boxes, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have value. Exactly. This is a gem of a park. It is beautiful. We're gonna talk a lot about the things that we've seen here in the short amount of time we've been here. Uh -huh. Even if our quote unquote scores are a little bit lower, if you're not in a 43 and a half foot fifth wheel or you're not looking to stay for a month at a time, you don't need to have a super strong internet connection to do your work. This is an amazing place. And we're just gonna start off by saying, highly recommend it. Absolutely. So with that said, let's talk about the big rig friendliness because it's actually not as bad as we thought. Yeah, we were actually terrified. I mean, the things that we heard about this place, like, you know, wait, how big is your trailer? You wanna get up there? Wait, what? <laughs> um, it actually wasn't bad. So our typical scoring system for big rig friendliness is broken down into two different categories. One, what it's like to get to the park, and then the other half is uh, what it's like to navigate within the park. Getting to the park, uh, you get off the interstate, which was 64, mm -hmm. right? I-64. Yeah. Yep. You go into a small town, you run into a lot of traffic lights and a lot of traffic, but you're done with it in what? Less than a well, mile. Yeah. yeah. Really, really soon. Um, and then it's just a straight shot down a pretty big, I guess like state road, if you will. At least a state road, if not a US highway. It's like 15 miles, wide shoulders. Yeah, 55 miles an hour. It's pretty easy. Piece of cake. You get off of that road and you have one mile to the park. On Overlook Drive. On Overlook Drive. Yep. Um, when you turn off, you're like, okay, it's not too bad. The further down you get, down the road you get, the narrower it gets yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but totally manageable. Like you can totally do it. Not, not a problem at all. Yeah, exactly. I was a little bit worried about it. I'm super anal retentive about making sure that I plan out our drives because of clearances and trees and everything else. Thank you. <laughs> and, and this is one that we were a little bit worried about because on Google, like satellite view, you couldn't really see this overlook drive because it's got a big tree canopy yeah. over it. And so we had asked the owners and they were like, yeah, it's be fine but yeah, to be fair a lot of owners would say that and we didn't know them yeah now that we know them they would never lie they yeah. are like the most <laughs> sweet guys yeah. in the world but it was super high clearance it did get narrow we came across a truck coming the opposite direction he had to pull off a little bit uh but it's not common that that happens it's a very lowly tr low traveled road as a matter of fact uh, the person that we ran into who well, we didn't run into them but as we saw <laughs> uh, language matters exactly <laughs> uh, was actually here at the park and uh he met us later that day it was like hey i was the one that was coming the other way he's like i've been coming out here for a while and it's the first time i've ever seen traffic on that road while yeah. i'm using it but it was easy yeah. it, it was a really easy road even if it was narrow it was perfectly navigable yep. and then you turn into the park and there's two entrances there's two kind of parts of the campground okay. and, and we were in the second entrance and they texted us ahead of time to let us know hey make sure that you go into this entrance yep. we had looked at the view we kind of knew what we we're getting into it's a little bit tight quarters for a rig our size we turn we go down this long gravel drive there's a parking lot off to the right a little bit of a like a uh barbed wire fence on the left because they have horses and donkeys, donkeys and chickens yeah and... it's really cool and so when you park you actually have to go up and around the office 
and then we had to go into the field which is kind of adjacent to the pool and just you know, go into the field turn left back like a three-point turn yep. effectively so that we're facing the right direction and then we just had to wiggle the the camper basically a little bit further in so that we're on our site it wasn't hard yeah it uh, wasn't hard at all it was unique because you don't typically have to drive in the grass and who knows if it was really really wet or rainy that might have been more difficult yeah but it wasn't and it was easy and so we got parked no problem at all so big rig friendliness for me getting to the park i'm gonna say four uh it would have been a five but that road is pretty narrow yep. and then within the park i'm gonna give it like a two um because it's totally doable it's not the easiest navigation in the world especially in a big rig if you have a smaller rig you're probably going to go in the other entrance and yep. it's way easier so yep. don't take this six out of ten from me and think oh my gosh this place is horrible it's not because we did it without any problem it's just different than a lot of other yep. places and I want to mirror your score. Um, getting to the park, you know, it, you can do it. Yeah, the road narrows. It kind of drops off the edge, you know, pretty sharply. But a four out of five. Once you get in the park, you make the turn. The driveway that we used, there was a bunch of trees. We may have kind of scraped along a little bit of them. Baby branches, nothing. Little nothing, tiny nothing, things, yeah, not a big easy. deal. Um, again, probably a two once you're inside the park. Again, for a rig our size, yeah, um, it's not normal to parallel park a 65 foot length of rig. Right, right. <laughs> and that's their qualification, right? I mean, this place was not designed, they're not after, that's not their core demographic, folks yep. like us, and we did it without any issue at all. So yep. six out of 10 for a big within this. Perfect. Let's talk about grounds and facilities. So, um, small park, and we had a conversation with someone not too long ago, and I think it actually explained the, the, the grounds facilities and even the vibe perfectly this is like cheers versus a club like a yeah. nightclub good good analogy so they've got a pool massive deck around the pool with tons of seating so you if you want to sit in the shade or in the sun what they say one or two thousand square i mean it's not quite as big as like a serenity farms yep but it's beautiful yep they do have one hot tub one of the new, unique things i saw with the uh, uh decking around the pool is if you want to be in the sun they have these sun shades that you can just pull back. Like you're trying to turn your deck into a convertible. You can just pull back the top, oh, be I in love the those. sun. Yes. If you don't yes. want to be in the sun, you can just draw them back close. It's yeah. pretty cool. It really is. Yeah. It's super neat. And, and so the pool is a great area. They do not just the pool there, they have like a little DJ area. They serve cocktails. Uh, last night they had cocktails. We'll talk more about that in the vibe. Yep. Uh, in addition to that, they have several perm RV sites, yep. but they only have like two official uh, campground kind of transient sites. The one that we're in, which can accommodate the bigger rigs. And then they have another one on the other part of the campground down by the barn. Uh, so, you know, make your reservations in advance if yeah. you want to come out for sure. Uh, they also have several tent sites. Uh, they've got, how many cabins was it? Six? I don't remember how many cabins. I think it was six cabins, and then they had a couple of rentals. Yeah. Um, like guest house suite type of yeah. things. The cabins, I want to point out that they are actually real log cabins. Amish built log Amish cabins. Amish built log cabins, yeah. yeah. Um, they do have a couple of guest suites that are right off of their home and also off of their home is this beautiful rec center that has all the seating and television and movies and an open kitchen for everyone to use. And decor. It is just so quintessentially like log cabin lodge. It's it's amazing. They did a pizza thing in there last night, which again, vibe, right? Okay, got yeah. it. <laughs> so, uh, I want to say one other thing about the site. Uh, we have 30 amp power. And yeah. so it, it's not a 50 amp plug. Um, we're far enough north. I mean, it gets hot here. Uh, luckily this weekend, it's not crazy. We can run on one or two ACs out of our three. You know, we're extra yeah. uh, without any issues. And so uh, we had no problem going to 30 amp. There's a couple of other places this year we're going to that are 30 amp. Uh, they don't have sewer, but they do have like a, like a honey wagon that they can pump your black yeah. tank out. Um, and in terms of water, there's no spigot here, but they have like a long hose. And so when we parked, we just brought the hose across the little gravel ray and plugged it in and filled up our 80 gallon freshwater tank and we're going off of that. Yep. So again, that's what I mean by it's not like this traditional campground with the amenities you might be used to. And if those are things that are super duper important to you, this may not be the place for you. That's okay. Uh, they're important to us, but we're only here for the weekend. And I'm so glad we've come because it's gorgeous. And if I have to drag a hose across to fill up our 80 gallon tank to give us three days of water, okay, problem solved, no big deal. Uh, what else would you say about grounds and facilities? Uh, I think the only thing I want to point out is that they do put trails mm. out on the property. Um, they're not trails in the traditional sense, like it's, you know, you know, just walk past it. Like they just go out, they just mow part of the area mm. so you have a place to walk around. But there's some pretty cool old, like rundown barns that are kind of falling over. And It's actually um, really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool back there. Um, we, we saw a deer. 
We did. We saw a deer. We scared the hell out of a deer. <laughs> I think it scared the hell of us too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very segwayable here. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Uh, um, there are donkeys and horses and chickens on the on the property that if you want to feed, you can. They're very friendly. Um, again, like to mirror what you said about the site, yeah, it's not for everybody. You don't have a water hookup. You don't have sewer. It's only 30 amp. But what the park brings, the vibe and everything that we're going to talk about kind of makes up for it. Yeah, in my opinion too. But I want to qualify it because you know, if that's not your cup of tea, if you want just the easy and easy out, easy access, easy hookups, uh, all those things, th again, this may not be the place for you. And frankly, that's not what they built it for. Nope. Yeah. And they'll be the first ones to tell you that. This was never intended to be a park for big rigs or full timers. This was yeah. be just a weekend resort getaway. Yeah. And they even texted us a few days before we got here. Hey, are you guys sure you want to come here? Because, yeah. you know, we're not really built for big rigs. It's not our shtick. It's not our target demographic. We're like, yeah, yeah, we, we've heard great things about it. We yeah. want to come visit it. So for from an objective standpoint, despite the fact that we love it here, you know, realistically speaking, the grounds and facilities are limited. And so I'm going to give it like, uh, like a six because for us, it may not be like the place we want to spend a month, but to come out here for a weekend, they have a lot of different grounds and facilities and amenities that we find very valuable and amenable, if you will. Uh, and you know, I'm actually going to mirror that score of six as well. You know, it, it's they have a pool, they have a tub, hot tub, they've got a few rentals that you can enjoy. The rec center is really, really nice. There's not much, but the park itself is tiny, so you don't really need a lot. And it is gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, beautiful landscape. I mean, the landscaping is great. The gentle rolling hills yep. of southern Indiana, northern Kentucky is beautiful. It's rural, it's quiet, it's well quiet without the music. Um, <laughs> it, it's everything that we would want. Yep. So six out of 10 for our and facilities. Let's talk about the vibe. So again, totally subjective. It's gonna change from person to person. So it depends on who you are, depends on the people that are here for that weekend, depends on the event, depends on the weather. So many variables can go into it, change the vibe. For us, totally open, welcome vibe. Again, like I did a comparison earlier, this is like cheers. Like you're gonna come in and this is gonna be friends and family to you. It's not gonna be like a bunch of, you know, it's my party queens <laughs> that you're not going to remember come Monday. Yeah. These are people that are going to have relationships with for, for years to come. It's like a family. And a lot of the people that come here are the seasonals that come. I mean, they have their rentals. They have the day passers yeah. during the weekend. But as we said before, they don't have a whole lot of RV sites. Uh, and so it seems like it's a very well gelled crowd. And when we, even when we were parking, when I was turning around in that field, try, you know, praying that I wasn't going to tear up this beautiful yeah. manicured grass, uh, you know, they were watching us. You know, part of it, I think part of it is because we're starting to get a name like, oh, the full time gays are here. Uh, but they're just genuinely good people. We just, right before we started recording, got invited to dinner with brats and hamburgers, which yeah. I'm thankful for because I love meat. meat. Meat, meat, yes. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the vibe here is so welcoming. There was a happy hour yesterday afternoon, kind of a, a free, just have a cocktail, get to know each other. The owners are gracious, they're welcoming, they hugged us the second we got <laughs> yeah. here. Uh, they'll tell you anything, they're, they're retired. This is like a hobby for them. I mean, it's a business, but you know, they're not after a million dollar place. That's not their goal. Their goal is to create a community that they can provide to the local area and people love it yeah. and we're part of that group that love it it is an amazing vibe yep. to me yeah I, mean, I don't know if i could add any more to that so i'm gonna actually just give a score of an eight um i would give it a little bit higher if there was a way for other like guests like us to be able to come in there's only two sites so um it'd be great if there was more sites but again it's not what they intended it for it to be <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But I mean, the vibe is independent of the sites as far as, you know, my own opinion, right? And so last night they did like a pizza thing and they did it in the, the rec hall, yep. which is beautiful. And everybody just hung out and sat at tables. And, you know, we could have easily just asked, hey, can we sit with you? And we sat in the couch and that was, it, it, we just got in here like, ah, oh, a little awkward. But you know what? That was on us. That wasn't yeah. on the campground. Exactly. These are These are the nicest, most welcoming people. We have made friends for life in a day that yeah. we've been here. Yeah. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a 9 instead of an 8. I'm going to go a little higher than you. Wow. Uh, I know, which is rare. I'm usually the jerk. Uh, but I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 just because you know, if you take away the infrastructure piece, which we've already addressed, this is a beautifully welcoming place. Whether you're coming as a day pass, whether you, if you don't have a huge rig, if you just want to rent a cabin, this is a great place to come for a nice, relaxing, friendly, weekend getaway they were playing volleyball in the pool yeah. a little while ago uh, so for me nine you eight 
8.5 for Vibe. Yeah. Lastly, let's talk about the internet. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's better it's, in some places. It's there. It is. Minimally. But, but they're again, only open on the weekends. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not a big thing for us because we, we, didn't, we didn't need to work. Yeah. Yay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have enough though. Yeah. We could work here we with could. Verizon. We could. With we could. Verizon. Um, we did talk to the owners and they did say that T-Mobile works similar to Verizon. Verizon's the best. T-Mobile works similar to Verizon and AT&T AT &T is very... Uh, Meh. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a WeBoost, uh, we talked about it before, check out our other videos if you want to learn more about how we use it. But a lot of folks here have that WeBoost just to get a little bit extra yeah. out of the signal. Uh, and so if you were going to stay here for a week and you had to work, have a WeBoost, which you probably do already if that's what you're doing with your life. And you, you should be okay. Yeah. Uh, it's not great though. Yeah. Um, uh, we were sitting with somebody yesterday and they were talking about they, they enjoy the fact that the internet here is very weak because they can just go ahead and disconnect right. um, and not even worry about, you know, emails or going on YouTube or, well, they should go on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. Um, <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> um, but it, on top of that, the Wi Fi in the park, there isn't any. Um, no, there's no Wi-Fi. They don't have access to high-speed internet here. Nope. So hopefully when like Starlink becomes a thing later this year, that's something they can you know, maybe look into. But it's adequate. If, if you had to use it for work, you could. If you're just here for the weekend, it's adequate for the little things that you might want to do. Uh, I'm going to give it a four. Yeah, I'm going to mirror that. I mean, it's there if you need it, but yeah. Um, so big rig finest we did uh i believe we six. did six total yeah and then the grounds and facilities i think we also landed at six yep the vibe we landed at 8.5 uh -huh. and internet we landed at, at four. four yeah but here's the thing and i'm just going to say it again here's the asterisk this place breaks our scoring system those are the scores that we would give any other place if we're looking at it as objectively as we could but it doesn't encapsulate just how magical this gem of a resort slash campground is. Uh, for that piece of it, it would be a much, much higher score. And thank you to the owners for letting us, uh, you know, for putting themselves out yeah. there, knowing full well the things we were looking for. Uh, a, a, a score, a number does not a campground make. It's a guide and it's based on very specific needs that not all of you, in fact, probably most of you don't have. Yeah. If you don't have our needs, if you don't have a 43 and a half foot fifth wheel, if you don't need internet uh, to work, this is a great place to come. Yep. So let's talk about the local area real quick. Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned in Big Rig Funniness, uh, when you get off of I-64, you run into a town. And in that town, you, we saw pretty much everything. You're gonna find your Walmarts and your restaurants and grocery stores and Walgreens, CVS, all that stuff is right there. Yeah. That was what? 15 minutes? Yeah, it's literally 15 miles from here. And yeah. it's, it's a quick 15 miles because it's a 55 mile an hour US highway. Yeah. Um, if you want something a little bit closer, I did see a gas station and a dollar gentle roll. Um, and there's that town in Kentucky that's even closer than that. Yeah, somebody mentioned it was... We'll put the title in the bubble. Yeah. But it, it's it's way closer than 15 miles. I think it is on the Kentucky side, but yep. it's a lot closer and they have good restaurants. Yep, exactly. So, bottom line, would you come back? In a heartbeat. Love this place. Uh, the parking was wonky, but it wasn't hard. It was just out of the ordinary. Yeah. It was easy to do. Uh, you know, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd want to stay for two weeks, you know, because of the the infrastructure. But yeah. that's not what this place is built for. Exactly. It's for a weekend crowd, and for that purpose, this is one of the nicer places, the easier places to integrate that I that I think we visited. Yep, totally agree. I mean, to spend a weekend here, phenomenal. Um, if we were to spend a week here, I mean, we'll have to see how that goes. We could do but, a full week, yeah, yeah, easily. But, you know, I'll definitely come back and give another shot. Yeah, I wish we had stayed for a full week. I didn't think to ask if we could. I just assumed that we couldn't now that we found out that we could. I wish we would have. Yep. Um, wonderful place. The score may be a little bit on the lower side, but the campground de de defies the score. This is a gem. And so if you've heard anything good about Stag Run, we're backing it up. Yep. If you've heard bad things about Stag Run, we're gonna just dissuade you from that notion because that might be a very specific need or a very specific niche that somebody has. Yep. Uh, wonderful place. Perfect. And, yeah, gem. All right. So, in that case, I'm David. And I'm Eddie. We are In It Together.